St. John's. Uh, today, I have the honor of introducing our guest speaker. Our guest speaker is Minister Erica Wilder. Thank you for joining us this morning. Minister Wilder attends Timothy Baptist Church, which is under the leadership of Reverend Deshaun Bristol. Where's that located? Is that in Roxbury? In Roxbury. Um, she was born and raised in Lawrence, Mass. I also believe she spent some time in North Andover as well. And she lives currently in Boston with her musically gifted son, Jordan. Amen. 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 <laughs> Minister um, Wilder received her license to preach at the historic Calvary Baptist Church in February of 2013 under the late Reverend Dr. Gregory E. Thomas. Amen. Currently, she is pursuing a diploma in urban studies at the Gordon Cromwell Theological Seminary in Boston, and she has plans to pursue a Master of Divinity degree. Amen. Minister Wilder is the current Dean of the United Baptist Convention of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Incorporated, a Congress Board, and is very active, I understand, in its music ministry. Well, and, um, and then uh, she is also um, blessed to be a co-author of a book compilation, Destined to Win, An Anecdote to Life's Tri Trials. So let's give Minister Wilder a hearty St. John's welcome as she comes and brings us the word today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Thank you for that warm welcome. Amen. Amen. You know, um, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, today. You bow your word for me. In such a special way, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. One more time, one more time. Who loves the Lord? Sing it with me. I love you. Cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Amen. 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 I'm not the opera singer that I can hear down there, amen, but it is a blessing, amen, for that beautiful voice that I did hear, amen. It is beautiful. You have a beautiful voice, amen. God bless you. But I do have a, a heart of praise, amen, and I love to worship the Lord. I'm going to read for your hearing the scripture, and then I'll pray, and then we'll just dive right into the word, amen. amen. It's a very short scripture. Um, it's from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. This morning, if you would allow me, I would like to speak to you from the topic, it is time. Step into your new season. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you, O God, for this day. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity, Lord, just to come before you in your presence, Lord God, in this house of worship, to stand behind this, your sacred desk, Lord God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would move me out of the way, that your word would come forth, unhindered and unbound, but these your people, Lord God. You know, Lord God, 
what they're going through. You know, Lord God, what they need, Lord. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you meet them at their point of need, even now, oh God. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'm so grateful and thankful just to be here as a humble servant, Lord God, to do your will. Father God, I pray that the meditations of my heart be acceptable in my sight. For, Lord, you are my strength, you are my redeemer, my savior, my healer, and my Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. So I want to just give you a little bit about me. Um, I've known your newly elected pastor for quite some time now, and um, he's been a blessing to me. And I pray that as you guys get to know him and love him, that he will continue to be a blessing for you. Amen. He's a charismatic man, as you all know. <laughs> Amen. And he is on fire for the Lord. And I'm so excited that he is here with you at this church on this day and in this year. Amen. So I pray nothing but God's blessings upon you and him and this ministry that you would go forth into your new season. Amen. 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 So I don't endeavor to be before you long, but I don't know what the Lord will do. Amen. <laughs> Amen. They used to call me the quiet preacher at Calvary, but I think I've lost that title somewhere along the way, amen? But nevertheless, God is still good, amen? So first, let me get the formalities out of the way because I was raised with protocol, amen? So first, giving honor to God who is the head of my life and to the pastor of this church, Reverend Ryan Tankersley, in his absence, I thank him for the opportunity to bring forth the word and to each and every one of you, I thank God for you. Amen. And I pray that God will bless you and keep you. And I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. So as I was seeking the Lord and wondering what the Lord would have me to speak on you today, I kept hearing this thought, it is time. It is your season. Amen. And I, I have a radio station that I I do on uh, Saturdays as a Christian radio station. So I invite y'all to listen. Tim was plugged there for WRBBradio.org or 104.9. Um, it's a Christian radio station and we have prayer and we have um, dialogue and, and of course we play good gospel music, amen. And it's also another um, part of it on Sunday mornings from six to nine. So if you just want something to encourage you in the morning, check it out, amen. But I, want, I, I say that to say this because one of the guest speakers that we had there on last Saturday, she said something about 2022 that stuck with me. And she said that 2022 is all about you and all about God's people. And I do believe that in 2022, this is the year of manifested blessings. I do believe that this is the year that God is going to pour out his spirit and do something new. Amen. I do believe that this is your year that you are going to receive double for your trouble. Amen. All of that that you went through was not for naught. It was not for anything. It was for a purpose. Amen. And you were sharing your testimony. Amen. So this is right in line with what God is trying to do. Amen. So we are praying for that to have come to fruition because this is a year of manifested blessings. Amen. All that you have been going through and all that you were going through is just a divine setup, a divine setup of what God is about to do for you in 2022. I do believe that whatever God has spoken into your life is going to come into fruition this year in 2022. It is March. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you just got a new pastor, right? Amen. The pastor elect, Reverend Brian Tankersley. I, I don't know if you know him, but I know him to be a friend. I know him to be a mentor and a brother. And that, that's my friend. Amen. We have gone through some things together. Amen. And I am just so happy, glad, and elated for what God is doing. Amen. But, but how many of you know that change is on the horizon? How many of you know that with a new pastor comes new changes? Comes with new challenges, right? Change in learning his ways versus Dr. Pearson's ways. Yes, I know Dr. Pearson. I know your former pastor. Actually, I uh, used to do seven last words here when I first started my ministry. 
And your Reverend, your former pastor, Reverend Pearson, invited me many, many times. And so I'm grateful for that door of opportunity that I had. So I know a little bit about y'all, okay? And I, I've been with, I've been around. Uh, maybe you guys don't know me, but I have been around and I am grateful and thankful for the, the networks and the collaboration that God has allowed me. Um, but, but we have to learn that changes are gonna come, right? You have Reverend Pearson is not Reverend Tankersley. Reverend Tankersley, not Reverend Pearson, right? There's got to be changes in getting to know him and his family versus Reverend Pearson and his family. Change in the vision that God has now given to Reverend Tankersley to take you into your next, to take you to your next level in Christ. How many of you know that with changes, there comes ups and downs, right? It comes with embracing. Say embrace. It comes with embracing the vision that God has now given to this man of God at this appointed time for you to lead you into your next. Amen. You are embarking on a new journey. And I stop by to tell you, it is your time. It is your time to step into your new season. It is your season. It is your time. Are you ready? Are you ready? St. John's, are you ready? In Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, we were reminded that there is a time for everything. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the sun. That means that nothing comes by surprise to God, right? Absolutely. Even with the wars going on and the, the rumors of war and the pestilence, there's nothing surprises God. All of it has been ordained for a reason and a purpose. We may not understand it. We may not know why God is doing it, but there's a purpose for it, amen? Because there's a season for every activity. Every, not some, not maybe every activity. So in this passage of scripture, we see that Solomon's point is that God has a plan for all of his people. All of his people. And just like the four seasons we have in New England, we too go through seasons in our lives. Seasons of waiting, seasons of process, and seasons of manifestations. Amen? Although you and I may be facing problems and circumstances and situations that seem to contradict the plans according to us, not according to God, but because we are in our flesh and we think, oh, well, God, you didn't do it the way I thought you was going to do it. We think it's contradictory to what God says, but it's not contradictory to what God says. It's contradictory to us because we think it should be this way or that way. But God wants to do a new thing, right? And so he's not going to bring us to go the same way. He's going to do a new thing. So we might feel contradictory to his plans for our lives because we think so, but that's not the answer. It is in God's plan. Amen? Amen. This passage helps us to know that the problems that we face should not be a barrier in believing God for our next, but rather as an opportunity to discover that without God, our life's problems really have no lasting solutions. And right now, St. John's, you are in a new season in the life of this church. Timing is important. We must learn to accept God's perfect timing. You guys are in a situation now that you are the part of the post-pandemic church. We are just starting to get back to some sense of normalcy after COVID, right? This post-pandemic world, right? We don't, they don't have the mask mandate in the stores anymore. We, you know, here and there we still do because that's what we believe and what we feel comfortable with, and that's fine. But in this post-pandemic world, we need to realize that, we, that our lives have forever been changed. Church as we know it has been ever been altered. The body of believers must change with the time, and that time is now. See, because the word of God never changes, but the way that we get the word of God out has to change. Amen? We've had social media for a while now, but before COVID, we weren't using it like we should. We've had it. We've had it all this time. And so we had to get creative when COVID happened because we couldn't come into the body, into the church. We couldn't come into these four walls. We couldn't be here. So we had to figure out another way to get God's word out because God's word is going to go forth regardless, right? 
So we have to get creative in that thing and we have to use these avenues. We have Zoom, we have social media, we got Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all of these mediums that we weren't utilizing. But you know how many more people we can reach now because we have our social medias up and running? I know there's people in, at least in Carolina that I know, in New Hampshire, because uh, my mom is watching, amen, she's in Carolina. Um, and I know that we've reached as far as India, Africa, because there's a world out there that needs to hear about Jesus. The way that we have to reach the masses has to be evolved. It has to change. Because the reality of the post-pandemic world is that you may not have people coming back into the church like they used to. Amen? They may not feel comfortable doing that. So you know what that new thing is? There's a, this thing, this evolving thing called the E-Church, right? E-Church. And that's a broad spectrum. There's a lot of people who may never step foot in St. John's physically, but they are being blessed by you guys' the services each and every week. Each and every time that you guys get up here and sing and pray and, and preach the word, you guys are being a blessing. Amen? You guys are reaching people you could have never thought. If they couldn't be here... Like Sister uh, Minister Gray, I think, was on there, right? She's not here, but she's on, she can watch it. Yeah. Amen? So that's a blessing. And yes, we will still have those who will come into the sanctuary, and that's a blessing as well. But the season is changing, and we, the church, need to take our place in this season. It is our now season. Amen? Say now. Yeah. Now season. Amen. I was in a Bible study just the other night, and the pastor said... The world is waiting for the church to show up. Amen. Think about that. The world is waiting for the church to show up. And that's so true. We've had hidden behind these four walls for far too long. Amen. There are people who are already saved in here. What about the homeless? What about the addicts on the street? What about that, that person who can't get here, who, who, who may need a ride? You know? There's all these outlets of us to um, expand our ministry, right? To reach those who are lost. There's a dying world out there. Amen? A dying world. We are the church, not the place where we assemble from week to week, but we, you and I are the church. There are people in this world without hope. There are people in this world without peace. There are people in this world without the love of Jesus, and that is where you come in. Amen. But in order for you and I to live our lives on purpose, we must first walk by faith. In Hebrews 11 and 1, it states, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For if we can see it, why hope for it? Right? We must walk by faith and not by sight. You have a new pastor who's been given a new vision or a renewed vision of where the Lord wants to take, not where Ryan Tankersley wants to take you, but where the Lord wants to take St. John's. Amen. And in order for you and I to walk in the season, we must align ourselves with the will and the purpose of God for our lives. Amen? And see, faith is a necessary tool that we need. But, you know, faith is also one of those things that it can't be measured in a laboratory. You can't measure faith. You can't measure that. How do you measure faith? It's impossible. Faith is something that we have to believe in. Faith is something that we have to trust, that we have to know deep within our hearts and deep within our bellies, amen? Ha has God ever showed you something or spoke something into your life and in your flesh you're like, Lord, Lord, what in the world are you talking about, right? Right? Because we're in our flesh. And I'll give you, I'll give you an example. When I got licensed, Reverend Thomas said to me, he says, oh, your ministry is going to be one that you're going to go to various churches. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm going to stay right here at Calvary and I'm going to just do my thing when I'm supposed to do my thing and be on my way. But God has opened up so many doors. Amen. I've been able to preach in a lot of different places. But in my flesh, I said, 
Nah, I got mm -mm. No, nope. mm -mm. I'm going to stay right here, right? And I was at my church for 26 years. And then God said, it's time to move. And I said, God, I don't know any other church. And then I, he led me to Timothy Baptist Church. But that was 26 years. I didn't know anything else. But sometimes God will take you out of your comfort zone so that you can grow, right? Because you get real comfortable. You get familiar, right? And so sometimes God's going to pull you out of that thing to make you realize that you have to depend on him. You can't depend on nobody else. I didn't know anybody at Timothy. Not a one. Not a one. It's okay, God. All right, God. You know, but God is so good. But not even with my story. Just think of it like this. You and I have to take leaps of faith sometimes. Trusting and knowing that God knows all and that he would never leave us, nor forsake us, or steer us in the wrong direction. Amen? And sometimes, sometimes God tells us to do some ridiculous things. Amen? If you don't believe me, it's in the word. Just take, for example, look at Noah. Noah who built an ark, right? It wasn't raining like that. And people look at him like, what are you doing making this big old ark? Like, what, what in the world is wrong with you, right? They were looking at him like he done lost his mind. But oh, when the flood came. He didn't look so foolish after all, did he? Hmm. They were begging and pleading, open up the door, let me in. And it was too late. It was too late. Amen. Not only, not only must we walk in faith in this new season, but we must also know that God wants to anoint you with fresh oil. Fresh oil. Like I mentioned before, you and I are not where we were. We're not the same person that we were before Christ. Amen. We were not, we're not the same person we were yesterday. We're not the same person we were last week, last month, last year. We're not the same person. You are no longer in that same place that you were yesterday. You've gone through some things. You've endured some hardship. You have matured through some circumstances. And now God wants to take you to another level in him. Do you trust, know, and believe that God has your very best interest at heart? Don't you know that you were created for greater? Don't you know that you are destined for greater? So I urge you to get ready to walk into your new season. Get ready to walk into your new season of power. Get ready to walk into your new season of victory. Get ready to walk into your destiny. Amen? Because you were created for such a time as this. Amen? There's a reason that you're still here. Many have died with COVID. But there's a reason you're still here. There's a purpose that still needs to be filled because if you were already done with your assignment, you'd already be home with Jesus. Amen? So there's a purpose for you still being here. There's a reason that you're still here in this post-pandemic world, this post-pandemic church. There's something that God has birthed inside of you that only you can do. Amen? Amen. Amen? To walk into your next, to walk into your new season, you also need to have an experience and a relationship with God. If COVID has taught us anything, it has taught us that you and I must value our relationships, especially the one with God. Before COVID, if the truth be told, we were just living our lives, going here and there, doing this and that, almost really too busy. We would give God one of those, thank you, Jesus, I thank you for this day, bless you, Lord, hallelujah, amen. Right? Because we were doing things, we were too busy. Not because we did it on purpose, but because life just got busy, life just got hectic. And so COVID came and we had to slow it down. We couldn't go anywhere, we couldn't do anything, we couldn't you know, just go to the mall or go on vacation. Those family dinner times, we had to have those back again because you couldn't go to no restaurant. You couldn't do anything. And so then you had all this time, all this time on your hands. And, and we had to get back into our word, study the word, meditate on the word. Because, you know, God desires that you and I commune with him. 
and to have a real relationship with him. You and I have been set apart for God's work to be done here on earth. We must come to know and realize that we are about our father's business, doing the work of the kingdom. Amen. We must know and realize that the fruit of our labor is not in vain. We must know that only what we do for Christ will last. Amen. Amen. So this is in my notes. So let me see. Um, a lot of times with COVID, there's a very familiar passage of scripture. It's in Matthew. And it talks about the different parables. And we realized that there was a lot of people who were just plain church. They were playing church. Because if the truth be told, when COVID happened, first they decided they'd be bedside Baptists. Then they decided they'd be no side Baptists. And now they're just not being any side Baptist. Their foundation was shaken. It wasn't built on a firm foundation, their relationship with God. Amen. Amen. You and I, though, are working for the king, and there is no greater reward than earning our heavenly wings and hearing him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Who wants to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant? Amen. Amen. I want to hear those words as well. Everything that we do should exhibit Christ. And one thing with COVID is that people, we got to see where people really were. Got to see where they really were. Like I would mention, going through the motions of going to church. They went through the formalities of going to church, but their relationship was not solid. Hmm. We need our relationship to be built on the firm foundation because when the storms of life come, if, it, you're not, if your faith is not rooted in something that is firm, every storm, every wind will secure you away from God. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He doesn't want us to be in a relationship with God. He wants to pull us down, right? He doesn't want us to have that relationship with God. The enemy's time is winding up. That's why there's so much turmoil going on. But when we're rooted, we're able to withstand the wiles of the enemy. But you cannot withstand the tests and trials if you don't have the foundation in the Lord. Amen. Amen. My God. It's so sad to see that the world... has gotten so far away from God. We read about Sodom and Gomorrah. And if you think about it, we are so much further off. So much further off. But in us being so much further off, that means that we, you and I have more work to do, a greater work to do, a greater purpose to do. Because the world needs to know that there is a God out there who loves them, who cares for them, who loves them unconditionally, who can love them through their hurt, who can love them beyond their addiction. So it is imperative that in order for us to have the fresh oil to run in our relationships and in our lives, we have to have that foundation. Amen. There's a song by Jacqueline Carr, uh, Greater, right? Greater is coming in. And she talks about the olive. And in order for the oil to flow, you got to go through the shaking, the beating, and the pressing. We got to go through some things sometimes because the anointing costs something. Salvation is free, but the anointing costs. Amen? Next, in order to walk into your new season, you have to know that God wants to and is developing you into all that he has called you to be. And it may not feel good sometimes when you're going through the process. It may not feel comfortable, but you know what? We have to trust the process because everything works together for the good of them who love the Lord. Amen? Amen. We must know that God is using our circumstances to produce character. Amen? 
We got to go through some things to produce some character in us. Amen. We have a purpose for the day and time that we are living in. We are still here because there's still more for you and I to do, still more for you and I to accomplish. There are so many things that God has in store for each and every one of you, his children, if we just believe. Amen. You, 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 St. John's are in a unique place because you have a new pastor and you have a new vision or a renewed vision. And God is trying to do something different in this place. It is time for you, St. John, to step in to your new season. It is time for things to be done not as usual. It's not church as usual anymore. Amen. 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 You have to be open to receive what it is that God has in store for you this day, this year, and for however many more years that we are still here on this earth. We know that time is winding down because look at the world. You can literally see Everything in the Bible is coming to pass right before our very eyes. So we got to get it right. We have to get it right. God is trying to take you and I into our new season. He is trying to take you into your now season. And all we have to do is trust and believe that God has his very best in store for you. So don't get discouraged. Don't lose hope. Just keep the faith. Yes, there's so much going on in the world. But our God is bigger than anything that's going on in the world. And like I mentioned, nothing comes by surprise to God. There's, there is something that we have to do each and every day. And that is we need to get girded up daily with the full armor of God. The full armor of God. Every day when you get up, you got to put on the full armor of God. Every day. The enemy is running rampant. But there is a remnant of people. There is a remnant of God's people who will stand up for what is right, who are ready to walk into the newness of their season, who are ready to walk into the newness of their life, who are ready to go forth in Jesus' name and proclaim the good news. Amen? Amen. It is time, church. It is time for you and I to stand up for what is right. It is time for you and I to step out on faith and do those things that God has purposed in your heart and in your mind to do. The time for you and I to sit on the sidelines is no longer. There is a dying world out there who needs to know about Jesus. That's where you come in. Amen. This is where the newness of who you are in Christ and where it is that God is trying to take you and to propel you into your next. This is where you have an individual purpose and a collective purpose as a church body to go forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Walk in the newness of life. Walk in your victory. Walk in your healing. Walk in your deliverance. Amen. It is a season and the time in the life of St. John's Baptist Church. It is a time to do away with the former things and time to step out on faith and embrace all that God has for you here and in this community and beyond. Amen. It is time that we step outside of the box and be open to the new ideas and new visions that God has placed in purpose in our hearts and minds of his people. There is a dying world out there that needs to know about this Jesus. This Jesus who offers hope for the hopeless. This Jesus who came to live and to die on our old rugged cross. This Jesus who came and was resurrected because he loved you and I this much. This Jesus who endured the cross for your sins and for mine. This Jesus who knew no sins of his own. This Jesus who suffered, bled, and died for your sins and for mine. This Jesus who wanted to show you that he endured the cross for you and that you can endure your cross and your challenges. This Jesus who loved you and I so much that even until the point of death, he stayed on the cross because of love. This Jesus who has your back through thick and thin, he clicks closer than a brother. This Jesus, amen, who loves you unconditionally. This Jesus who is the bright morning star. This Jesus who is the lily of the valley. This Jesus who is the son of the living God. This Jesus who is the almighty, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. This Jesus who know, who went to the very ends of the earth for you and for me. This Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. This Jesus, the one who was and is still to come. This Jesus who knew that you were going to need him. 
and he came for you. This Jesus, who will be your, do your, your doctor in the hospital, your lawyer in the courtroom, this Jesus, who is the lily of the valley, this Jesus, who is our bright and morning star, this Jesus, who is the salvation of the world, this Jesus, who is our prince of peace, this Jesus, who is our deliverer, this Jesus, who is our healer, this Jesus, my God, my God, he is the priest of peace. This Jesus is awesome. This Jesus is awesome wonder. And this Jesus is coming back again. He's coming back again for a church without a spot, blemish, a wrinkle. Will you be ready? Will you walk into your new season? Will you trust that he's bringing you out? Will you trust that he's bringing you through? It may hurt sometimes. It may not feel good sometimes, but it's a new season. It's uncharted territory. But you got to go through something because the blessing is on the other side of through. Amen, somebody. Amen. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? There's a dying world out there who needs to experience the love of Christ and all that he has to offer. It is time for new ideas. It is time for new ministries to be birthed. It is time for you and I to be obedient to the move of God. It is time for you and I to no longer sit on the sidelines. Amen. It is time for you and I to step out on faith and believe God for all that he has said he's going to do. It is time for you and I to believe God. Trust him. God has spoken some things into your life that you may not have even shared with anybody else. But God has purpose for this year to be the year of manifestation. This year to be a year of purpose. This year for you to step out on faith and do what God says to do. Go forth in Jesus' name. This is your season. This is your time. Walk into your season. Walk into your destiny. Walk into your victory. Walk into your healing. Walk in it. Walk in your purpose. Walk in your purpose. It is time. It's now your season. Are you ready? Amen and God bless you. Amen. Amen. It is your season. You are not here by accident. I don't know anything about what you may be going through, but God knows. God knows where you are, and he's meeting you at that point of need right now. He knows your struggles. He knows your pain. He's seen your tears, and he loves you. He loves you, and he wants the very best for you. He wants you to walk into the newness of your season. He wants you to go forth. God did not keep you here for not. There is a reason that you are here. There is a reason that God has allowed you to be here. There's a reason that you are in this post-pandemic world, in this post-pandemic church. Because it's not business as usual anymore. We cannot go back to how it was we cannot. We can't afford to. We cannot afford to. There's too many people's lives who are at stake. Time is winding down. The enemy is busy, but we need to get busier. Amen? We need to get busier. We've been silent for far too long. Far too long. Where's the church? We are here. We are called to go forth and preach. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't got to beat them over the head with the Bible. Live your life. Show the love of Christ. Smile. Hug them if you know them. Sometimes that's all they need. But we have a purpose. We have something to do. God is calling on you. Each and every one of you. We all have our share stories that we can share. We all have been saved for those of us who are believers, right? We can share the love of Christ. We can share that hope. When we were hopeless, we can share that God was our hope. When we were in distress, we can share how he helped us and picked us up and turned us around. That's all we got to do. It's not hard. But it is necessary. It is necessary. Everybody standing, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
God be the glory. I understand you have social media, so I don't know if everyone here who is in the sanctuary is saved, and we never want to miss the opportunity for someone to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We never want to miss that opportunity because there's somebody out there, maybe you're watching on social media or even here, that needs to know this Jesus. This Jesus that will walk with you and talk with you. This Jesus who will be with you through the thick and the thin. This Jesus loves you so much that he went to the cross willingly. Willingly. He endured the cross, the pain, the suffering for you and for me so that we might have the right to eternal life. Is there one? Ask me not. be one who desires prayer as you get ready to walk into your new season, into your now season. If that is you, I invite you to come that we may pray with you. It's time. It's time to stop running. It's time to walk into your new season. Bless God. Hallelujah. Thank you. We have done as the Lord has commanded. I pray for each and every one of you that you will just walk into your new season. God's got you. 
He's already there. He is already there waiting for you. He's already made the crooked way straight. All you have to do is walk one foot in front of the other. Step out on faith. He'll lead you every step of the way. But you first have to take the step. Take that first step. And he will go with you the rest of the way. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare for the benediction. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for this day. We thank you, Lord God, for those who are underneath the sound of my voice, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you would touch them, Lord God. Give them a newness about themselves this week, Lord God, that they will feel confident and equipped to walk into their new season, Lord God. Help them to walk in purpose. Help them to walk in victory. Help them to walk in favor. Help them to walk in their healing. And help them walk in their new now season, God. God, be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that they may know, be known upon the earth. Thy saving health among the nations. The grace of our Lord and Savior be with you today and always. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank <laughs> you. 